And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, coming to us from Shadowlands Games. Now, now, currently developing the Tricarion R RPG, which managed to get funded in less than an hour. The one and only David Rilo Rilo ah, Rileo Viejo. I'm hoping I got it right. <laughs> <There's a quote laughs> yeah, that's right. How are you doing today, man? Hello. Although it's well, tonight where you are, if, I, if I've got my math right. Yeah, we're... Almost in sun setting, but, but well, we're we very, very okay. We're, we're very excited to be here in the temple game. Mm -hmm. And well, just talking about triggering RPG, we seem to love that. Mm -hmm. So, well, now, Tracarion, which is do which is very much doing a Art Deco kind of illusionist affair. Um, Obviously, that originally started out as a board game. Were how familiar were you with the board game version of of, the, of this IP before tackling it in role playing game form? Well, around half of our editorial board team um, was familiar with the game. I played to carry on the tabletop game, and that simply always thought about. Well, the, it may be this backstory of the board game. Uh, maybe it's well, it's 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 very promising. It's we love the, the the things that the board game has beyond the mechanics. So why why can we contact to Mind Clash Game and see if they want to do it? But it f was a kind of synergy because. Uh, Mind class in, in that time it was always thinking about adapting the Trickerion atmosphere and the background into role playing games because mm -hmm. in, in the people that were working there also play role playing games and uh, were thinking about it. and just at the same time we were at the same page and started to talking about it and what well, finally there. Mm -hmm. Now with the, with that in mind, since it's using a D six based affair, I am cu I am curious if so if um some of the de if the development of the Winter King helped in nailing down the development of um, Tracarion's mechanics. Oh yes, yeah, there's an influence about the iteration of the mechanics in the Stirpe system. Mm -hmm. In Tricarion RPG, taken from the the Winter King role playing game, mm -hmm. um, we wanted to, um, in one hand, continue to developing the the system, but maintaining the spirit of the magic in, in somehow with uh, these disciplines and abilities from the Winter King. But taking into account the, on the other hand, the flavor, the the, the things that the board game of the Tricarian board game uh, shows, where you play these tricks and this enhanced ability of the magicians using Tricarian shards and this kind of thing. So we try to adapt the mm, uh, the Winter King magic system, but. Mm, maintaining the spirit. So we have now schools as the biggest part of the decision of what kind of magic, what kind of tricks you will be able to do. And then the disciplines acting as the actions of the magic from the Winter King. So you can do uh, escapist uh, and then you unlock, then you summon the barrier and you throw uh, the dice and, and see what happens. So, yes, it maintains somehow the Winter King magic system. Mm -hmm. 
now, given now given that with with Winter King you had essentially a blank slate that you you could pretty much do and you could pretty much do anything with. Whereas with Tricarion, there is obviously going to be an expectation of carrying some of the spirit of the board game into this role playing game. Um, was it relatively easy to maintain to maintain that balance between the two, or were were there some aspects of say the board game that were a little bit harder to adapt? Well, at the first time we put everything on the table to see how we could work with the mechanics of our system, the mechanics from the board game, and we started to sacrifice things in order to be able to be played. So um, we wanted to take the tricks, the, the abilities and the possibilities that a magician has to uh, face all the intrigues and sort of fuse and um, gain fame and do all the the performance but also w this mm, was uh, saying us that maybe magicians are more centered in do some kind of tricks and uh, the freedom the blank page you have to do magic I mean the Witten Kim should be uh, controlled somehow it's not as broad as in the Witten Kim but it maintain th um, the flexibility in how tricks can be done mm -hmm. in in one hand we can Especially. we can do set tricks that you already have in the deck of tricks and somehow as mm, what well, and but well, for, for the only hands you have some free to use these uh, the kind of trick of for example an spiritist can uh, read uh, an spirit and read your mind or know the secret about using the whispers from a spirit or using the tarot cards or so there is mm, some sort of freedom, but not as much as from the Britain King. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I will. I will, when it comes now, given that, uh, sorry, English is sometimes my first language. Uh, you have four school. You have four schools of ma of magic, and I'm get and um. I'm guessing that in that in all of it, you're making it explicitly clear that this is all forms of illusionism. Since obviously people who are coming to this from the board game are gonna are gonna figure that out, but there's always the possibility that somebody is coming into this RPG with no experience of the board game source material. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now. Given given that with each t with each type of discipline in the full book, do you have plans on putting a li a list of potential effects that those forms of magic can take? Yes, uh, we wanted to, uh, as I said before, uh, give some freedom to for the creativity of players, but also for beginners and people that are not familiarized with the. Uh, the way magic works in the Steeper system. Mm. So we are, want to guide if, with many, some, uh, I think uh, we were trying to adapt as many as tricks as we can from the board game and mm, develop uh, the uh, equivalences to the magnitudes of the system of magic from the Winter King, but Exposing the showing uh, players and and the GM as many as many examples as we can about the four um, so the way the uh, tricks and magic are done in this uh, school of magic. So there will be plenty of examples. There are plenty of um, ways to to use magic, and you can 
use these first guidelines, these uh, tricks that we will see in the in the core book to use your creativity and perform your well, just like your personal mark, or you can do related tricks beginning from these guides. So, so yeah, it's gonna be examples and it's gonna be freedom. So it's it's. It's a delicate equilibrium, but, but we're, we're going to, to offer it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Were, there any, were there any cases where there were certain motifs that you wanted to go with that you had to, but, but weren't in the board game, you had to make them yourself? I'm sorry, can you repeat? Uh, were there... Ca- were there... Were you able to? Were there any cases where there were certain niches in terms of tricks that weren't filled in by the board game, so you guys had to make the trick yourself? Okay, to make the tricks, um, players, we have different resources to to make them. This is marked by the magician company. You will have a secondary um, sheet. Uh, this is well, it's some like the a character sheet of a novel house sheet in in some of Fire Fire and Ice and well it's this sheet of the magician company you will have your manager and the engineer and all the sources you will have and, and sort of a pool of all the group of magicians that are. Uh, collaborating in during the adventures and the scenarios so using that sources you will know what may you may need in the time and for do these tricks you can go from now to the future and from now to the past uh, uh, I mean you can explain what you want to do and then get the resources and the preparation necessary to do that or on the other way around you can simply throw the dice and according to what happening then we can go back go do a flashback and explain your preparation and all the resources you put to enhance the role of dice and depending if this a success a, a superior success or a failure Yeah, I can I can certainly I can certainly get that. And I'm with each of the tricks that were in the pregens, you ha- you added that uh, there's potential effects with each degree of success. And I'm guessing that's something that's going to be carried forward in the full book. Yeah, yeah. So we will uh, offer in the core uh, book. I, yeah. I could so. And what's especially interesting is the this yep. pamphlet-like design that you've got with those pregens, um, almost like the kind of pamphlet that would get handed out at a show. And is the and I I do see that that's something that you're carrying forward with the um, physical ver- physical version in some form, but mm-hmm. shifting from the shifting from that with the within the within with the book of scenarios are each of them meant to be um the size of the size of like single session one shots or are some of the scenarios larger in scope well we we will have in the book of scenarios uh short scenarios that should be a one shot <laughs> you know what i mean so yes some of them are short scenarios but others are well contain sandbox and you can you, you gms will have all the tools in uh, specific locations so uh, for example the uh, magnus pantheon theater or the uh, mansion of the archdukes mm-hmm. of magoria so you will have all 
you need to to conduce this the session or sessions so uh, as long as it's uh, some kind of contained um sandbox so it, it may be not a uh, one shot but well uh, av on average i think that from one shot out to two or three session and maximum the the scenarios containing the book uh, yeah yeah more or less yeah, yeah from one shot to three sessions yeah so hold on now shifting shifting a little bit the this is a the winter king had large had largely a whole country to work with and Tracarion has the the capital of illusion, Megoria. Um, was with that in, with that in mind, was it? Were there any adjustments that had to be made from writing a writing a whole country's worth of setting to writing a city's worth of setting? Well, we wanted to maintain the scenario from the board game this greatest city, the capital of illusion. But we want to make this city great, large and alive. So there are going to be many different districts, areas, factions, and all the tensions in the city, in the powers in the, of the city uh, that put the focus in magicians and all the history and philosophy for uh, the magic. Mm -hmm. So we believe that it that um, this uh, city um, take the feeling that it's a large, very large place in which you will have many opportunities to, to play different kind of ventures uh, but we are also in the process of um, designing and developing the background of Magoria mm -hmm. we started to spend it and taking from all the information we got from Mancal James and all the information we got from all the bit of information in the backgrounds of each character from the board game, so we started to span to this large continent, the continental war, and all the places and countries so that are surrounding Magoria. So there will be some kind uh, of um, information uh, about what's around Magoria, where, what is this, what was this. Uh, continental war, the, this conflict, what is the eras from the history of the place, and then we got the center of Magoria designing it as a very large uh, city. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, in the future, because we will continue to bet uh, for Tricarion RPG, so maybe in the future if it's everything's going well and and people play it and in, are interested. We have plans to develop uh, magic schools, to develop some places, uh, uh, some districts, well, like uh, the Dalgar Academy and all places, but also the surroundings of Magoria to give more chances uh, of, to play in this world. But well, it's, let's see. I, I can get that. Now, with that in, with that in mind, when it comes to the, when it comes to the the city, obviously it's separated into different um, dis, into different districts. If would it be fair to say that the that size wise the city is akin to, say, New York City in the in the nineteen twenties? in terms of its size, or would you say it would be larger? Well, it... I think it's gonna be larger. Because we want to 
include some suburbs and some outside zones with rural near zones. Uh, it's gonna be a really, really big city with many possibilities and many classes and many uh, opportunities for magicians to not only search for per, this pursue of fame, but also uh, try to get the all means to to enhance their abilities to uh, perform everything they need to get the passions done or not. And well, it's gonna be this kind of mixtures of a very large city in the early 1920s with these universal positions and um, these uh, dawn of technology with the energy of the Tricadion that being recently discovered and this two point of view, the, the point of view of the people that the average people that don't know uh, the secrets of magicians are the old magicians that, that have this, this tradition and these uh, resources from many years and decades from the past that can some it's, it's like um, Domination of some zones of the city, some district on the city, and the potential use of developing of the technology from the magicians and the new technology that it's 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 gonna be in the center of all the entries and all the fight for the power um, and what mm. <laughs> maybe. Maybe I'm getting to large responses with yeah. no <laughs> trying worries, to no explain worries. a lot, a lot with only one answer. Sorry. That's part. That's part for the course here in the temple. So don't worry, you're fine. Uh, but to con but with that with that kind of thing in mind, uh, given given how this is going to work. Uh, what would you be shooting for as far as the core rulebook's page count? Well, we wanted to be not a large mm, core book. Because, mm -hmm. well, um, it is not that as handy as we wanted to 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 have mm, uh, core books where we all we also play and we prefer to have more contained core books and with precise information with um, maybe the well there's still developing so it's gonna be um, a thought more than a reality by now but we wanted to be no more than maybe 200 pages 180 pages, uh, well, maybe, maybe, around it. Mm -hmm. I could, I could certainly see it. I couldn't see it more going more than 250, even with the stretch goals you guys have. Uh, and as far as a release window, what would you be shooting for? Oh, at the very least, for the di for the digital end of things, obviously the physical side is going to have some more complications. Mm. Yes, we we wanted to release the game as soon as we can, but we well, our estimations say that during the first semester of uh, two thousand and twenty-five. We will have the early access of all the PDFs, mm -hmm. both the core book and the book of scenarios. And then it's gonna get the PDF of the screen, the GM screen. 
and maybe it's starting production in late June. Being realistic, we prefer to to go further in in the estimations and say September can be a good month to start shippings and start maybe reaching stores for t- October, November. Mm-hmm. But we work to get advanced to to that date. So well. We're thinking in September and working to be maybe at June or as, as soon as possible. All right, I can I can certainly get that. But with that with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, Thank you. drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> and of Thank course, you very much. It's been a pleasure. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present... My name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!